strange new era is dawning. An era of revolutionary experiments. Wired torsos, chip-implanted brains, creatures of silicon and steel. Welcome to the age of cyborgs and androids. As humans become more machine-like, and machines more human, the line between biology and technology is starting to blur. And in the process, we may just be reinventing the future of our species. In this age of advancing technology, we are becoming increasingly impatient with the bodies nature has given us. With our frailties, our failing sight, our broken limbs, the crippling limitations of illness and age. While our minds soar, our bodies seem frozen in time. What if we could build a better body, use technology to fix this human form, and then actually improve upon it, make it stronger, faster, smarter, and create the human of the future today? Futurists have long speculated that we could use our technology to alter the course of human evolution, to redesign the species. Four decades ago, the neuroscientist Manfred Kleins imagined engineering a new race of people for life in space. Their bodies rewired, their hearts replaced by nuclear fuel cells. Metal beneath the skin. He called them cybernetic organisms, cyborgs, the ultimate merger of man and machine. In the past decade, medical science has already fit some 11 million people worldwide with artificial body parts. Titanium hearts, synthetic corneas, mechanical hands and legs. Now, a new generation of implants is on the horizon. As computer chips become tinier, more powerful, engineers are fitting them with biological sensors, electrodes, radio receivers, devices that tap directly into the senses and reach deep into the brain itself. It was the ancient Chinese who first discovered that the body actually runs on electricity. Over the centuries, scientists speculated that we could tap into that electrical system to restore lost functions and actually repair the body like a machine. It took modern electronics to show us how. Electrical current flows through our nerve cells, the neurons, carrying instructions and information. That same current can flow to and from the cells into man-made devices, allowing them to communicate and interact, setting the stage for some remarkable developments. Researchers at the University of Illinois, Chicago, are now attempting to perform an act once confined to the Bible, restoring sight to the blind. They've built a tiny chip that can be inserted directly into the retina at the back of the eye. It is designed to convert light to electricity, stimulating the retina and giving patients the first glimmers of sight. The ability to make out patterns of light and dark.
Another team, based at Johns Hopkins University, is hoping to produce an even clearer image. With a complete artificial vision system, millions suffer from damaged retinas. Yet their optic nerve, connecting eyes and brain, is in perfect order. Their vision degenerates when cells at the back of the retina die off. An array of electrodes is tacked directly onto living cells at the front of the retina. It connects to a tiny computer chip, which receives signals wirelessly from an external camera mounted discreetly on a pair of glasses. The result, a modern day miracle. Manufactured vision. This is a simulation of what doctors expect patients to see. Images recorded on hundreds of tiny squares called pixels, then patched into the brain. The electrodes will not deliver the subtleties of a fully functioning eye, but they can restore useful vision and a new sense of connection to the world. This is the promise of a new bionic age. Senses once lost can be recovered. What you thought was gone forever can now be restored. Today's high-tech implants are just beginning to help the first wave of patients by sending electrical impulses into their nervous systems. What if you could go one step further? To receive impulses coming out of the body. To read thoughts and intentions coming from the brain itself. Igor Feynman is a neurosurgeon who works with patients who have lost the ability to move who are trapped inside their bodies. Uh, one of the first things that we'll be able to do is uh, letting somebody who is completely locked in, say, get on the web and use a cursor on the web and just by their thoughts, move the cursor on the web and surf the internet or something like that. The centerpiece of this revolutionary new project is a brain implant that will actually read out a person's thoughts directly into a computer. The project is headed by Dr. Richard Anderson, a neuroscientist from the California Institute of Technology. Anderson discovered a special region of the brain where movements are thought up and planned in the split second before the body carries them out. It's called the parietal reach region. Using brain imaging systems, Dr. Anderson and colleagues have shown that this part of the brain still functions even in those who are completely paralyzed. Working with a team from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Anderson is designing a computer chip that can be placed into this region. The chip has a series of electrodes that plug right into the brain tissue and pick up impulses given off by brain cells. It will relay those impulses to an external computer. It's the ultimate remote control. Users will merely think about an action and it will happen. They'll imagine reaching and their neurons will send the command to a robotic arm or a cursor on a computer screen. In short, the implant will allow the mind to act directly on the physical world around it. A kind of high-tech telekinesis, connecting the flow of electricity in the brain to the world of computers and man-made devices.